Around a year ago, I sold my NVIDIA RTX 4090 for an AMD RX 7900 XTX, a card that on paper should be much weaker. But why did I do it and was it a huge mistake? Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. That's right, I did the unthinkable. I downgraded my GPU from the most powerful graphics card you can buy today, the GPU that everybody wants, to an AMD RX 7900 XTX, a GPU that on paper should be much, much weaker. And you might be asking, the question, why would I do something so crazy? And there were definitely a ton of reasons at the time. A huge one was definitely the amount of display bandwidth that the RX 7900 XTX had, allowing me to set up a ton of different displays for testing off of one GPU. But also, there was a ton of issues I was having with NVIDIA at the time that, after switching to AMD, just simply went away. I mean, take a look at this list of the just insane amount of problems I was having with the RTX 49 when I originally made this switch. And of course, everybody over on YouTube loves to talk about how great AMD GPUs are, but it seems like nobody wants to put their money where their mouth is. And that's exactly what I did because not only did I take out the RTX 4090, but I went ahead and sold it to make sure that I was stuck with the RX 7900 XTX in my personal system for a very long time. And after a very long time, what are my thoughts on the switch from a 4090 to a 7900 XTX and would I recommend anybody else do such a thing. Now, real quick before I get into my actual experience, I do want you guys to go ahead and put in the comments below whether or not you think that I stuck with the ARC 7900 XTX after a year, or if you think that maybe I went ahead and at some point swapped back to NVIDIA and why in the comments below. But in any case, let's go ahead and talk about my experience because actually overall, my experience has been pretty dang good and a lot better than I thought it was gonna be originally. I was thinking that AMD was gonna be in the situation where it was all those years back when I tried them in the past where I was having a ton of problems, especially when it came to the video and photo editing side of professional GPU usage. However, that's not the case today. I can tell you guys that AMD has come a long way since those times, and definitely AMD is gonna be, for the most part, on par with NVIDIA for a lot of those video and photo editing applications. However, I did find that specifically in DaVinci Resolve, there were a few scenarios in which NVIDIA was able to accelerate some sort of video effects faster than AMD was able to do. However, otherwise, I had no crashes, no issues, and it was just an absolutely flawless experience going over to AMD and for the most part it was very very fast as well and I don't think I could tell the difference between the 7900 XTX or the 4090 for professional video or photo editing in the vast majority of situations and so on that front I have been extremely satisfied with the ARC 7900 XTX and the overall driver stability as well has definitely been top notch in my opinion outside of maybe the issue that they had with the anti-lag plus which was definitely a gaffe on AMD's side but I was not having the stability issues that people were reporting around the RX 5000 series. It was all very, very stable and the gaming was also stutter-free, lag-free, and a great experience all around. However, speaking of gaming, in terms of performance, what was it like downgrading from a 4090 to a 7900 XTX and was I able to get used to it? The answer to the second question is yes. I was definitely able to get used to it because as it turns out, and you might have seen some of my videos on the 7900 XTX, overclocking yes it does overclock like an absolute beast depending on the model that you get in your luck of the draw on the silicon lottery i got lucky and had a really good model so i got i think roughly somewhere around 20 percent more performance out of my card then actually got it to be pretty close to an rtx 4090 in most rasterized games now the 4090 is still faster even when compared to a basically cherry picked super overclock 7900 xtx but it is a pretty close competition in a lot of cases depending on the games you play if you get lucky with your overclocking however where it's not close is ray tracing i gotta tell you guys if you're big into ray tracing the 4090 is just 
way ahead of the 7900 XTX. In fact, if you were to do something like Cyberpunk 2077 at max ray trace settings, the 7900 XTX is gonna feel more like a 70 class card than a competitor to the 90 class with those ray tracing effects turned on. However, in some other cases, the simple ray trace shadows and stuff like that, it actually can get somewhat close to a 4090, but just be aware when everybody talks about the Nvidia cards being better at ray tracing, that has definitely been my experience. There's a huge gap there. Although to be fair, I will say that even on a 4090, I feel like it's just not quite ready for ray tracing. So I don't think this is as big of a selling point as some people make it out to be, at least not yet. When the 50 series rolls around and ray tracing gets even a further jump and probably a really big one in terms of ray tracing and path tracing performance, I think then we can definitely revisit the whole ray tracing argument. But as for now, I think in most cases, you'll probably wanna turn it off even on a 4090. However, there is one thing that I think AMD users are definitely gonna miss out on, and that's DLSS. Now look, FSR has definitely been getting better, and even in some cases, it can look sharper than DLSS or have some less ghosting, artifacting in some of those rare cases, but I would say overall on average, you are gonna find that DLSS is going to be far superior to FSR. Now again, the gap is closing, and AMD recently put out their latest revision of FSR, which has drastically improved things once again, but just be aware for the vast majority of titles out there on the market right now, DLSS on balanced or even in some cases on performance can look as good as FSR on quality. Now, if you're playing at 4K, I think both FSR and DLSS for the most part are gonna look pretty dang good. But if you need to drop down to a balanced or performance setting, that's where DLSS really pulls ahead. Or if you're trying to use upscaling at 1440p, DLSS really pulls ahead. And it is a major advantage for Nvidia at this point in time, but who knows? Since we did just see AMD release a pretty big update to FSR, it is possible that in another year's time, they could be very, very close in terms of quality, but right now, that's just not the case, and that is definitely something that you would wanna consider when purchasing a GPU. And I will tell you guys that I was able to get in contact with Nvidia during my use of the 7900 XTX and all the videos that I posted about it. Hey, maybe Nvidia wasn't too happy about that, so they did reach out to me, and thankfully I was able to send them a ton of information on the issues that Nvidia's been having. And after so much time, I did go ahead and actually check in with an Nvidia card to see how has their driver stack been progressing? Are they still way behind AMD in terms of the control panel as well as all these issues with displays? Or have they finally caught up after being able to not only ingest all the feedback from all of you watching in the general community, but my direct feedback to them over email as well, as hopefully that did help. And what I can tell you guys is, yes, they were able to make a ton of progress on all the issues that I reported. For example, here under the general display issues that I had listed, they basically not knocked out almost all these issues. And there's also a ton of general issues that were fixed, such as, and this one's a pretty big one, the latency mon issues with their NVIDIA RTX 30 and RTX 40 series GPUs, that was fixed. They also have a new NVIDIA app, which is just way, way better than the NVIDIA control panel. And once that gets out of beta, I think that is gonna be basically the complete solution to the slow and the laggy control panel that feels like it was from Windows XP. And also they did bring out NVIDIA RTX HDR. And I gotta give him credit for RTX HDR. That is a killer feature. It's super awesome for those games that do not support auto HDR. If you have an HDR display, it's definitely something you should consider when buying a GPU as it is highly configurable, which is a great thing for the various different HDR displays out there. However, they didn't fix everything. There's definitely a couple of big issues out there. I wasn't able to check if they were able to fix the 57 inch Samsung Neo G9 being locked to 120 Hertz. Wouldn't be surprised if that's still the case, but I don't have an answer there. But the big ones that I wanna talk about are the display stream compression issues. Now look, AMD just simply doesn't have these issues. You plug in any display, you're not gonna get black screens for any of them that I've tested at least so far. They don't have things being locked out in their control panel. Everything just works on AMD. It's super fast and there's no weird problems with display stream compression. With Nvidia, that is not the case. I've been hounding them on this for months. They still have not fixed these issues and these are very annoying issues. Not only are you locked out of things like DLDSR and DSR, but you also can't even create custom resolutions and you are going to get two to, I think I've seen as high as almost 10 second black screens 
on specific displays depending on how quickly they can recover from a lost signal when using display stream compression and you alt tab out of a full screen application. Now, I know this seems specific and kind of nitpicky, but this is actually really annoying to deal with after a long period of time. And again, this is something that just doesn't happen on AMD GPUs. So I do feel like overall AMD still does have a leg up on Nvidia when it comes to display compatibility, not only because they do have some 54 gigabit ports on DisplayPort 2.1 versus the 1.4 that NVIDIA currently has, but also their software stack seems better able to handle displays that use display stream compression. And that's actually a big thing, and I do think that's also something you should consider when buying a GPU. So to wrap this up, guys, after changing out my RTX 4090 and selling it around a year ago now, and using the ARC 7900 XTX for a very long time, what am I sticking with and what do I think about these GPUs? And I'm actually gonna read this off because I wanna make sure that I get this right. So overall, AMD definitely offers better value for most gamers and they're catching up on software making AMD an excellent choice for money, but more time is needed to match things like DLSS if they ever can. And at this point, I feel like DLSS is a huge selling point, which evens the conversation somewhat. Between that and the massive improvements NVIDIA's made to their drivers, especially with the addition of the new NVIDIA app and RTX HDR, which is, by the way, a godsend for HDR games that don't support auto HDR. Well, I think there are very valid reasons to go with either brand. And after testing the 4090 again for some time with these new features, I've realized that recent updates to DaVinci Resolve have allowed for a great speed up in some effects that are being applied. And in my specific scenario, where I no longer need to run three to four 4K monitors off one PC, as I now have a dedicated monitor testing PC, I've come to the decision that I am going to be keeping the RTX 4090, which I bought with my own money, by the way, that was not sent to me by Nvidia. I contacted them to help them fix problems not to get a free 4090, but in any case, yes, I'm gonna be keeping the 4090, which I wasted money on again, so don't do what I did, and go back to NVIDIA, but I am glad I used AMD for such a long time because now I feel much more confident trying their cards again in the future if they are able to, say, match something like a 5090 at a far lower price, and overall, I do think for gamers, it's hard to justify spending around $700 more for an RTX 4090 at $1,600 when you can just buy a 7900 XTX now, commonly for around 900 bucks and get fairly close in performance for non-ray trace games if you get lucky with your silicon. So I think I actually would recommend a 7900 XTX over a 4090 in most cases, unless you have a specific application that either works better with Nvidia, like was my case, or you really want RTX HDR, or you use ray tracing often. So there you have it, guys. Don't do what I did. Don't constantly waste money going between a 4090 and a 7900 XTX. I do this to give you guys an idea of what the experience is like, and in my opinion, Again, I think you should, for the most part, buy 7900 XTX unless you are willing to spend basically nearly double to have absolutely, well, not absolutely, but almost zero compromises and put up with the display stream compression issues that NVIDIA has, which to be fair, it's not a deal breaker, but it is annoying. So there you have it. Hopefully that helped you guys out. I will have some affiliate links, sure, why not, by the way, to the 7900 XTX and the 4090 if you decide you want one or the other now. Um, otherwise, maybe wait for the 50 series at this point in time if you want a really high-end GPU. The 5090 is looking crazy. If you want more information about that, I will be keeping my eye on it. Be sure to get subscribed for future videos on that as well as more testing in the future. But that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Do you think that the 7900 XTX is better or the RTX 4090? And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.